The plaintiff, Tiffany, says, I want to sleep divorce my husband because his snoring is driving me crazy. She's here to prove her husband has sleep apnea and wants him to sleep on the couch until he takes it seriously. The defendant, Demis, says his snoring isn't that bad and he's tired of his wife diagnosing him from a Google search. He's here to counter Sue, asking Dr. Oz to make sure he doesn't get kicked out of his bed. Health court is now in session. Plaintiff, please help me understand, what does sleep divorce mean to you? Dr. Oz, it means that I am at my wit's end. And I must be, like, totally at the line because this tall, dark, and handsome man, to even consider, I have to kick him out of my bed. I, I have, he has to go. So what is the story doing to you? How is it affecting you? Dr. Oz, I'm on a weight loss plan. You know, you told me. You said uh, uh, sleeping all night, having healthy sleep is one of the big reasons for losing weight. But his dick on loud snoring keeps me up. I cannot get proper rest and he has got to go. He's in denial. Just to help all of us, can you describe said snore? What does it sound like? You know what, it's, it's, like, it's like I sleep with a beatbox. <laughs> yeah, human beatbox, right next to me. Wow. <laughs> You'll have a moment, sir. One last question. You're here to kick him out of your bed until yes. he takes his snoring seriously. He's not. Do you believe he also has sleep apnea? Yes. He meets all the criteria. He has sleep apnea. Google says so. Let me get the defendant involved in this. You, you are arguing that the charge of sleep apnea, not the storing, but the sleep apnea should be thrown out. Why is that? Absolutely. Look, Google, I mean, she's a Google doctor. She wants to examine everything she sees by Google. And I know by watching your show that that is the wrong way to go. So this should be thrown out. It's a complete lie. There's nothing true about this. So let the record show that I do frown on Dr. Google. Internet diagnosing <laughs> can be dangerous. However, I've seen in our court records that you've been married for 18 years. Is that correct? That's correct. 18 years, two kids. Yes. Have you ever worried about being banished from your bedroom? And what do you think it would do to your marriage if you have a sleep divorce? I mean, she took a vow before God and man saying she was going to be with me through everything that we had to go through. Now. Because she alleges that I snore? I mean, it's, it's, there's no you evidence snore. of this. This is, a, this is all the evidence that she has is Google. That's it. Nothing else. Now, I understand the problem with internet diagnosing for sleep apnea, but this snoring, we must have some evidence. Plaintiff, I understand you brought some for this yes, case. Yes, I did. I have brought evidence from my two precious daughters, Dallas and Skylar. Let's look at the evidence, please. In the middle of the night, he starts snoring like I cannot Skylar. sleep at all. And he snores like this. <laughs> like a war hog. So Dr. Oz, please help our family. We all need some sleep. We love you, Daddy, but we need to tell the truth. That's right. So, <laughs> defendant, you deny those adorable eyewitness accounts of your own children. I mean, those are such precious children. This is the first time I've ever seen delinquent behavior in them. <laughs> and uh, and I I'm it concerned. <laughs> I I'm really concerned. I think this has to do with her late night watching of television. She watches your reruns and others, and she wants me out of there. A counter allegation. A counter That's suit. right. All right, well, to help decide this sleep divorce case, we need to bring in an expert witness. Normally, yes. I would bring in a sleep doctor but we decided to bring out the big guns. Please welcome celebrity divorce attorney and star of Bravo's Untying the Knot, Vicki Ziegler. <laughs> the big guns. So I've asked her this with this to opine. You've been listening to the testimony. What do you think so far? Wow, well, we have dichotomy positions here. You have one person, the defendant, who's denying he's uh, snoring. But the problem is you're sleeping. So I'm not sure how you know you're actually snoring or not there, snoring. Yes. I just saw witness testimony, oh. eyewitness and ear witness testimony that heard you snore. Now, Tiffany, the question becomes, are you ready to be separated 
from the defendant in the bedroom, because that's what sleep divorce is all about. You want to think part about of the night, that? part of the night. <laughs> Part of the night. All right, hold on a minute. Well, that's not what I see, Dr. Oz, in my experience with a lot of these couples. It's you need to separate from the bedroom. One person, before you go to sleep, actually goes to another location, whether it's a couch or another bedroom. Disrupting your sleep is not going to help the underlying symptom and cause, which is half having to figure out what are the solutions to your snoring. Welcome back to Health Court. Today I'm presiding over the case of the I want to sleep divorce my sleeping husband because he's snoring. The plaintiff, Tiffany, wants to kick her husband out of bed, what they call a sleep divorce, because his snoring is unbearable. And she believes he has sleep apnea that he's not taking seriously. The defendant, Demis, is countersuing his wife because he doesn't want to get kicked out of his own bed. He's arguing against the internet-diagnosed sleep apnea. Guest expert witness, celebrity divorce attorney, and Bravo star Vicki Ziegler is back giving us some advice. How bad for a marriage can sleeping in separate beds be? It can be very bad unless you're both committed. The question becomes, every night you're sleeping together, you're intimate, you have that time to wind down. When you separate bedrooms, it, cause, it can cause a problem. It ca can cause some resentment between the two of you. You can feel disconnected. So it's important for you both to be focused on making sure that if you do separate and sleep divorce, that you're gonna work on your relationship and your marriage as if you're dating. So you can sneak into the other person's room, mm. make it fun and sexy, and not make it like it's a bad thing, defendant, because I see you looking at me yes. angrily and saying, wait a second, Killing listen, you. if you snore, you lose. We can't tell that you have sleep apnea until Dr. Oz tells sleep us you do. not that important, though. <gasps> you know, Dr. It's, Oz. It's, it's, it's so order the court, please. Order the court. <laughs> Defendant. I think it's you, crucial. You, you don't have professional counsel here. I would stop speaking if I were <laughs> Vicki, you have some questions for the litigants. What are they? I do. So I'm curious. You've been married for 18 years. Why now, plaintiff? It just is, it's like the straw that hit the camel's back. I mean, he's waking me up. Now my kids are complaining. Um, all, we're, we're, none of us are really getting our proper rest except for Demos. He can fall asleep like in 10 seconds. Right. We're all like, oh my gosh, I have my children running in. Like, is somebody rallying around? No. It's dead, like, you know, right. going sleep, warhog. And sleep is <laughs> crucial for productivity, right. um, to, to be, have clarity when you're driving, when you're working, you know, you're working, you're raising the right. children, it's important. And defendant, what's so wrong with the plaintiff caring about your health? Yeah. If you have sleep apnea, possibly, there's an underlying problem, obviously, potentially with your health. So don't you want to be here for a long time for your wife and your two beautiful daughters? I mean, she's a loving wife, truly. And uh, I, I'm in agreement with you. Let nothing, especially sleep, mm -hmm. come between the love that we have. <laughs> well, so, they, you, you, know know. What, you know what they say? Happy wife, happy life. Yeah. I would agree with that. Okay, so we're gonna hear that you're gonna work towards fixing the snoring problem if Dr. Oz tells you you have to. Well, let's, let, let's get down to the irrefutable evidence mm -hmm. that will decide this case. So, Vicki, I need you to help me with something. Can you sure. do that for me? Anything you need. You have need. a measuring tape, right? I got it. All right. Defendant, please approach the bench. If you don't mind, I'd like you to expose your neck. Please come around. To Vicki. And Vicki's going to measure your neck. Come a little so closer can here. People at home. <laughs> if the neck circumference is 17 inches or larger, that raises the specter of sleep apnea. It's an independent risk factor, and it looks like it's a... Vicki, what is it? We are on the button. 17. 17. 17 inches. You may take your position, sir. Thank you. Wow, you're on the cusp. Okay. Does that surprise you, Demis? <laughs> you know, it's genetic. <laughs> I, I didn't ask for this body. I didn't ask for this neck. I think that's an admission. It, yes, you should uh, refrain from speaking <laughs> further. By health court order, Demis was actually sent to a sleep lab to prove whether or not he is suffering from okay. sleep apnea. Dr. Westwood from the Department of Neurology at Columbia University uh, and I have reviewed the test results. Are you ready for the results? Yes. Did you go through the test? Yes, I'm an innocent man. Now the world will see. The official diagnosis is that you are suffering from sleep apnea. You have I sleep apnea. You. <laughs> I'm sorry, plaintiff? Sorry, sorry. Please. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you are suffering from sleep apnea and sleep deprivation because of the sleep apnea. So I am ready to make my final ruling. You've opined? Yes, Judge. We have the expert witnesses. My 
the, the petitioner in the case of, I want to seek divorce my husband because he's storing, I will find, because of the evidence presented by our expert witness, I rule in favor of the plaintiff. And I'm granting, listen carefully, Demis, I see this frown on your face, a temporary, temporary order allowing the sleep divorce. Tiffany, your husband has sleep apnea, as you predicted with your internet search. He's clearly storing according to your adorable daughters. He's ordered to follow up with his doctor. If he does that and begins treatment, then he should be allowed back into the bed, but not before he's received treatment. And only because sleep apnea is a very treatable condition, and if left undiagnosed and untreated, it can be dangerous. Dr. Oz's ruling was that my husband has sleep apnea, which, okay, I already told mild. you. Mild, you did say mild. At least, finally, I will get some sleep. Um, hopefully, you will get your help. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna fight against Dr. Oz. You wanna take someone in your life to health court? Go to DrOz.com slash health court to submit your case. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.